What's up and welcome, I'm the one and only West Coast King, and welcome back to the Sounders Career Mode, where we're dominating everybody. I mean, we could realistically, I think we could wrap up the Supporter Shield in this episode. There's only two episodes left um, in the regular season before we get into the playoff stuff, but I know I usually start off with the standings, but I want to show you how ridiculous the scheduling is in the MLS. So last episode, we finished off with the U.S. Open Cup semifinals against Portland. Today we're starting off with a game against Portland, then we play a few games in there, then we finish off this this episode against Portland, next episode uh, we play DC United in the US Open Cup Final before playing Portland, and then finishing off the regular season against Colorado. So in nine games over two months, we play Portland in four of those. That's almost half the games in two months against one team. I know it's a derby game, the biggest rivalry we've got. Um, and probably the biggest one in the MLS, but it's very difficult for a team to get up for four games against the same team in two months. It's ridiculous, but such is life in the MLS. It never is going to make sense, but that's what we're living with. But we got a lot to take care of today. We're going to get through five games, so let's get right into this first game against Portland. Here's a look at Portland starting 11. Um, okay, so last time we played them, I said that that was their full strength starting 11. It was not. I'm sorry. I totally forgot about Nagby, Valeria, and Wallace. They were not in. They're in there today. So this should be a little bit more interesting than it was last time. Here's a look at our starting 11. And it is our full strength. So we're going full strength against full strength. It is on, baby. In Portland on a rainy night, we're going at it. Head to head, mano a mano. Let's get it. I don't think I can get it to Oba. Oh, he gets by a man. Now put a ball in. Oh, it's back post. There's Mina. Mina, what are you doing? Put the ball in the net. You had an open header to Mina. We have no width going right now. Julian puts the ball up. Well, that was a wee bit too far for Oba. Oh, Femi just got wrecked by Corasi. There we go. Castillo. No one's going to come over here and pick up Castillo. Castillo, you're going to be able to run. Spins. Oh, look at Fabian Castillo. Oh, I missed I missed Oba. I missed Oba. Now I can play it in. There's Oba. Oh, it's too close to Karasi. Remick to Castillo. Castillo in space. Fires. It falls to Oba. Oba hit it. Oh, my God. How did that go in? I have no idea. But we got the one nothing lead shortly before halftime. Castillo making things happen on the left side. And Oba just being the poacher that he is. Cleaning up the, the deflection off of Karasi. He missed the first one. A little 180, like, I don't even know how he did that. Alright, one nothing. Come on, you're just wasting time. That wastes so much time. Will Johnson took his sweet little time getting over there. And they're running about a minute off the clock with cutscenes. I will take it. I will absolutely take it. We're going to make our substitutions right now as well. Romain Gall and Alejandro Guido coming on. For uh, Zalalem, which I just forgot his name is Zalalem, not Zelalem, and uh, Julian Green. Look at all the space for Romain Gall over here. Romain, oh, I hit it too soon, I did it too soon. Can he get there? He... Oh, he did! Romain Gall! How did that ball just fall to Romain in the middle of the pitch? In the middle of the 18 yard box, the ball just sat up perfectly. Gall puts it in the back of the net, and we've got a 2 0 lead. That should do it. That was actually, they tried to clear it right there, I just saw it. They tried to clear it and Mana got a foot to it to stop the clearance. And the ball ended up right at Romain Gall's feet. Beautifully done, yes he Mena. Nicely done. There you go Romain. Romain Gall. Play the ball in. To Mears. Mears. Hold it up. Play it in. There, there was nobody, I was hoping for someone to make a run right behind me so I could just flick it back. Nobody did. But that's the final whistle. And we do get the three points from Portland, a very difficult game, it's never easy coming to Portland, but we do get the three points in the end. Jumping right into the next game, it's an away game against San Jose. Now I've played them both for the last times that we've actually come up against them and I've beaten them. But this is an away match, with some reserves in there. If we lose a game this season, this looks like it could be the one, we don't, we win it. Yes, Mena and Fabian Castillo coming through with the goals. Oh man, I was really nervous about that one. I was not confident at all that we were going to get that win. But, I keep underestimating this team and I really should learn not to do that. Here is a showdown we've been waiting for. Playing Portland is nice and all. 
But this is the showdown between the top two teams in the league. This is the away game at RSL. To, to really, this is their last shot to get back in this thing. If they don't beat us, we're going to win the Supporter Shield probably this episode. So if they don't win this one, it's all over. Here are the standings. <laughs> we're 19 points clear of RSL. You know what? I don't think they can catch us even if they win. We might have already clinched it. Nine no, not yet. We're very, very close though. Very, very close. Here's a look at RSL starting 11. It's a good it's a good 11. We know this. We've played them a bunch of times. We know that they're good. And I think that they've actually sold uh, Saborio. So I don't have to worry about him anymore. He's the one that always scores against me. But I think that they sold him in the last transfer window, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yes. Good cutout, boys. All right. We need to... Ref! Who's the foul on? I don't even... It's on me! And I have a red card! What did I do? What happened? I thought that was a foul! I didn't touch him! You just saw it! I literally did not touch him! How did I just get a red card? Okay then! This just got a lot more interesting. There he goes, Alalum. Play the ball. Oh, okay, that works to Oba. Oba, can you play Yessi Mena? You can! Yessi Mena is deflected by Nick Ramondo. Huge save from Nick. And that was a good save, too. Oh, that was, a, that was a great save. There you go, Oba. Go get that ball. There you go, Oba. There you go. Oba Femi, that's gotta be a goal. Oba Femi Martin's on his left foot, just wide open in the box. That, that's how we're going to have to play this game. I know it's not going to look pretty, but they're going to push numbers forward because they have to win, otherwise they're not going to win the supporter shield. And we're down a man. We just have to sit back and counterattack with pace. I'm sorry, but that's how it's going to be. Oh my god, dude. Who was that? Was that? I don't know who that was. It was the long one flying by that guy. Oh my god. Yo, Joel Plata is terrifying. He's actually terrifying on the ball. It went wide. It went wide. Wow, that was scary. Oh, crap. There's... Oh, I cannot do that. I cannot go sliding. I have to stay on my feet. That was a huge mistake. And I'm lucky I didn't pay for it. Revis, over the top to Oba. Nope, Olave's getting... No! Olave missed the ball! Oba's on it! Oba's on it! Can you hit it? He can! He's tripped from behind by Olave! And no foul. Nothing. I haven't got a single foul literally not have gotten a single foul called this game ref Joel Plata just punched me in the face and no foul what the okay you guys no just clear it just clear it what I don't understand what the fouls are why can I not get a foul called not one that one was clearly Joel Plata just elbowed me right in the nose and I got no foul why are there only two? I am on. I am on ultra defense. Okay, I do have four people back. That scared me. I thought for sure I only had two people right there. And oh, where? No. Oh my god. That guy is a wizard. I could not stop him for my life. He got by three people like they weren't even there. Bornstein saved that with his face. There is the final whistle. We come out of Salt Lake with a 1-0 victory. That should seal the deal for the Supporter Shield right there. Oh my gosh, that was so difficult. We did not deserve to win. We were absolutely dominated from start to finish. The red card, though, was undeserved. So, I mean, it kind of evened things out a little bit we, that we won the game. Because we didn't deserve a red card for that at all. Straight into the next game. It's going to be against Chicago. This is a home game against the worst team in the Eastern Conference. And we got some reserves in there again. I mean, we have to keep rotating things up or changing things up and rotating players through. I don't know what the heck I was saying right there because of how many games we're playing in such a short time. But again, a 1-0 victory. And again, it's Obafemi Martins. Oh my God, how did we play that poorly against Chicago? 
So we've just gotten back our first scouting report from our brand new five-star scout. I sent him to Ghana because we're kind of limited in where we can send our youth scouts because of the restrictions I've placed on players that I can bring in. And I sent him to Ghana, and he has brought back a quite a good haul, we'll say. Uh, the first couple players, you know, not bad, not bad, pretty decent. But oh boy, these next guys, oh, oh, they're so good. Oh, Juan Pablo coming through for us. We got some good players coming into the youth system now. So here's an unfortunate glitch in this game, and it's a really, really frustrating one. It's regarding youth players wanting out of your academy. This is an email saying that TL Sapong wants out of my youth system. That's fine, I've offered him a contract, um, and he'll be signing with us shortly. Then I got another email saying that TL Sapong wants out of the youth academy. This is a glitch. This is not supposed to say TL Sapong, it's supposed to say some other player that's in the youth system, and I have no way of finding out who is actually wanting out. There's no way to go into the youth system and find out who wants a contract and wants to leave your youth academy. So what's going to end up happening is, this is going to play out and they're going to leave our club. They're going to leave our youth system and sign with someone else and that's really aggravating having waited for these players to develop in your youth system just to lose them to a glitch like this. If it's one of the good players, I might just go sign Kevin Robale, our best youth player right now, just to make sure it's not him. But what, well, I'm going to lose somebody because I can't find out who actually wants out. We are ready for the last game of this episode now. It's going to be again against Portland. This one's a home game. And we got the full strength starting 11 in there. We're all rested up and ready to go. So let's get in here and beat the Timbers one more time. Here is a look at Portland's starting 11. It's a little bit changed from the last time we played them. It's still Addy and Valeri up top and Wallace on the left, but they don't have Nagby and they don't have Will Johnson. There he goes, LLM. Who is that? That's Mena. Mena hold it up. Play that in. To Oba. On his left foot! That guy took it bad touch. That was not where I wanted to take that first touch. We're gonna play this in. Captoom can't shoot. Oh, that center that center defensive midfield spot is just a freaking black hole on offense. Why is he even up there? I'd rather have Bornstein up there than Captoom. He straight cannot shoot at all. Watch, watch, just Obafemi's just gonna do this himself. There goes Obafemi. Oh! No, it's Captoom again! Green with the ball. Can Green... No. There you go. Um, I just saw that Obafemi... Captoom out of nowhere! Obafemi Martins is down in the middle of the box. I was actually looking at Obafemi. I took the shot just to... I thought Captoom was gonna hit it over the bar again. That's what he does every time. So I just hit B to play it out, essentially. Cap 2, I didn't even see where the ball went. I wasn't even looking at the goal. What happened? I was looking dead at Obafemi Martins in the middle of the field. I was thinking, oh my god, we're in so much trouble. And Cap 2 scored. How did he do that? What the heck was that? It ends up going, well, it should have ended up at Castillo's feet. Back to Castillo. There you go, Castillo. Castillo spins and... Oh, yep. 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 It's going to be one of those games. I can already feel it. It's one of those games where it just... It doesn't... And out again. Oh, boy. Anyway. When the game plays the way it is right now, and when people are just standing around not doing anything, you just have to hope that you can hold on for the win, okay? It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be pretty. Yes, Imena. Can you play that ball across? He does! Julian Green gets on the end of it! Just as I was saying that this game has turned into one of those where you just it doesn't play right. It just feels weird playing it. Everything goes right. And yes, Imena plays the ball across to Julian Green, who puts it in the back of the net, and we're up 2-0 on Portland. There is the final whistle. We get the three points from Portland in just one of, just another game. It's just one of those games that, both games last episode ended, were, were just like this. They were just weird. They're just weird. They, you can't get any rhythm going because the game just plays so strange. And it was, this was another one of those games, but at least we got the three points out of it. 
Alright, so we got some things to talk about after that game. The first of which is Obafemi Martins did go down with a sprained ankle, which means he's going to be out three weeks, and that puts him getting back right around the start of the playoffs, which is fine with me. That actually gives us a nice little preview of that youth movement I was talking about when we sold Clint Dempsey. We're going to move Julian Green up to striker. Romain Gull comes in at the right mid spot. It gives us a nice little trial run with this youth movement. The next thing, briefly, was that youth squad glitch I was talking about. And the way I've decided to combat that is I've just signed everyone in the youth squad that was 17 years old. Typically, it's 17 year olds that want to be bought out of the youth system. So I've just bought everyone that was 17 years old. And hopefully, I don't lose anybody now. And uh, just quickly, the players that I got out of that, the first one is Kevin Robail, the most exciting prospect at the time in the youth system. And he's 68 overall rated. However, his main position is center back, but he has 72 finishing ability. 72 is one of the best on my entire team, along with 72 shot power. It's incredible. However, it does say he can play center mid, left back, and right back as well. But with 58 pace, no way is he going to play left back or right back just too slow. And his passing isn't good enough to play in the midfield. So I guess he's going to end up playing center back. And kind of, it's going to be a waste of that 72 finishing ability, but he doesn't have the attributes to play anywhere else. The other players I got were Thompson. Um, he's probably going to go out on loan somewhere uh, to start things out, along with Mendoza. He's a center back, which means I'm going to have to sell probably two center backs in the upcoming transfer window, because I have way too many of them now. And then Sapong, the guy that started all this madness, is going to go out on loan as well. He's going to be good at some point down the road, but honestly, he wasn't ready to be called up, so I'm going to put him out on loan just to make sure I can keep him in the squad, um, and he's not actually here taking up a roster spot. Okay, so... As things stand, we are 24 points up on RSL. The Supporter Shield race is done and dusted. It was done a long time ago, and I didn't even realize. In the Eastern Conference, they are fighting down to the wire for that last playoff spot. Down to New England, Houston, and Montreal. In the West, LA could actually jump up and swipe the last playoff spot from Vancouver, which is impressive um, considering they were down at the bottom for most of the season. San Jose is still technically in it as well, and I think New York could actually still get one. Um, we'll start off next time against DC United in the US Open Cup Final, and then we have two regular season games left, one against Portland, the last one against Colorado, to finish off this regular season, and we're still undefeated. We could potentially go undefeated for the entire regular season. That would be awesome, and we're only going to be getting better. But some of the other teams I've noticed are getting better as well, so I, I wouldn't hold my breath that this is going to be uh, a repeat thing that we're going to keep doing all over and over again. I don't think that'll happen. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. If you had as much fun as I did, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you in the next episode. See ya.